Hello, baby doll sprinkles. So I made a video early in the year, months ago, and it was about the yield curve model. Now, the yield curve model is a very famous model made by a gentleman named Campbell Harvey. It has a 100% strike rate to predict a recession. But here's the thing, friends. The creator himself, Mr. Harvey, he's been coming out saying, hey, it's actually flashing a false signal this time. This time's actually different. And no one's been paying attention to him. I made a video about it and I tweeted about it months ago when it came out and it was very interesting. Was, I was like, this is such an enormous news, but no one's talking about it. Very interesting. And you know why. Most of the crowd are on the sidelines. Most of the crowd drinks soy. Most of the crowd thinks everything's going to crash to zero and they want to buy the dip and make infinite money. But we know most of the crowd is poor. I'm sorry, you can't all win. You gotta have balls of steel like me. Titanium brass balls. So, in an interview, right, is an interview, Scott Melka did an interview. And he interviewed Mr. Harvey. Isn't it great? So, it's crazy. This is Mr. Harvey in the top right. Mr. Harvey, he's awesome, man. Right, he understands a lot. I think he's bullish on crypto now, too. I remember when he was kind of on the side about crypto. So, I've got a video here. And I even link it here. And we're just going to quickly run through it. I want you to see this juicy, juicy information. Look, look, at how, look at how far ahead of the curve I am. No pun intended. In my video, I go through, you know, the first article, Mr. Harvey saying, you know what? I know my, my signal, the, the model has been correct for like, you know, 50, 70 years. But I think now it's actually wrong, right? And I go through here explaining the weaknesses of the model. And also... You can see, the this is the, the yield curve itself. Can you see these, these boxes here? This is when the yield curve went negative. So when the spread between the very long end and the three-month interest rates is negative, deeply negative. And look, look, it's just like so negative here. Like, wow. That's why everybody expects an enormous recession. Huge. That's why everyone expects it. So there's so many pieces of information you can gather from this. It's really cool, right? Also, I mentioned this information here. The title of this segment, look at this little part, it's called We Adjust Our Spending Downwards. So what I'm speaking about here is because everyone knows about the yield curve model and it's and the most anticipated recession ever, right? See, I've even got here, intro to the most anticipated recession ever. So because we know something's coming bad in the future, you don't go buy that second Ferrari. You don't go buy those extra middens. You don't go buy those extra fluffy slippers. You know, triple fluffy. You've already got double fluffy. You don't need the triple fluff. And because you plan ahead like that, you don't get silly. And because you don't get silly, when there's a slowdown, you are not as trapped. If everybody collectively behaves like this, you have a smooth economic cycle quote unquote, you basically get a bear trap because everybody expects something bad to happen, but everyone adjusts, so it doesn't happen. That's why the market goes up. You see why these things are always a moving target. I explained so much of this video with the S&P 500 as well. You know, I've given you the basic rundown here. But in this interview, Mr. Harvey, so he gives like four or five reasons here why he thinks it's actually flashing a false signal. And one of them, he mentions it's to do with the jobs. And he says like, the jobs, there's so many jobs out there. And a recession is basically when they just have to cut a lot of workers and send them out. So basically, you know, if we get a chart, we can actually see, okay, if this is your, let's say this was your salary, right? This is everyone, we're going to draw a chart. This is everyone's salary. What would happen is, you know, everyone's salary for the year is fixed, right? It's fixed. So it just stays at one price. Let's say this salary is like 100K, right? But what happens is, if, if there's a recession, because most people's salaries, they can't float, right? That's why you get hired in the first place, right? A lot of people don't want to take risks. So in a real free market economy, maybe your salary of 100K should go down to like 50K. But most people would lose their mind. They'd absolutely go mental. No one can handle that. If a company's not profitable anymore, they go, hey man, we're going to cut your wages by 50%. Whoa. Like if you're going to do that, you may as well start a business yourself. No one can handle this risk. So they've got to keep it at 100K. But what ends up happening is, if the company can't afford you anymore, 
it lets everyone go. So your 100K becomes zero, right? Your 100K becomes zero. And what ends up happening is everybody, all, you, all of the people, men, women, who get laid off, you go join the job market. And when the economy's weak, all those extra workers can't get absorbed. There's too many, you know? So Mr. Harvey mentions why this time is different is there is an absolutely ginormously insane number of job availability out there. Huge. He's like, he says it's, it's 1.8 for every one worker. So, so if you get laid off, all right, this is what happened with the tech sector, right? All these tech guys, all these nerds, and there will be a nerd glasses emoji here. All these tech sector dudes like, yeah, do it, I work to Google, dude, woo. All these people with their 100K salaries, when they get cut, like, oh, you're gonna get laid off. When they all go to the market, it's not the end of the world. They can just go find another company and they're back to 100K. There you go. You see that little gap? This is flashing the false signal of what's been happening in the yield curve. So this is just one of the data points. There are others that he mentions as well, but just kind of show you like the whole investing, it's, it's easy and it's hard. It's easy because all you gotta do is buy and hold. That's the easy part. You actually don't need to do anything, you just buy and hold. The hard part is we are walking forward in time, absorbing new information every day. And it's always different. There's always new technology. There's always a new World War Three. There's always somebody who can't afford middens anymore. You know, there's always these crazy, unpredictable stuff coming. Always. And they're unforeseen, unknown, and you're constantly walking in the shadows in the dark. And you have to absorb this information. Now, I know, see, everybody says, oh, just don't look at the news. It's easy, man. Go, okay, yeah, you try that. You try that. Look in crypto. I know, man, if I see a big fat red candle or a big fat green candle, I know it doesn't matter. Someone just market hit the price. But I'll go and I'll watch the entertainment videos with you guys too. I'll go and interpret it myself, you know. But I'm always using a measuring stick. So if I see a big fat green candle, right, or a red candle, if I see big fat green red candles in Bitcoin, no matter what happens, I am always observing it from the perspective of, all right, has anything fundamentally changed with respect to the network effect? Is the code still working? Yes. Is the community still there? Yes. All right. That's what I want to see. Now, you can take hits from time to time because you can really argue anything. You're like, oh, no, we're getting banned in this country. The community is getting smaller. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. You can't lose sight of the big picture. Always use this base. That's why when there's like a big recession, Warren Buffett in his interviews, he's always like, look, yes, the recession's bad. Yes, someone's fluffy slippers may have exploded in an unforeseen experiment and event. Sure, but they're still going to drink Coca-Cola. They're going to get thirsty tomorrow. They're going to have a birthday party next year. There's going to be Coke everywhere, right? They're going to be thirsty for that sweet, sweet Coke. And he knows that, and he says that. If we just took this perspective with crypto, we'd be better. So yeah, yeah, there is a yield curve. Yeah, maybe it's deeply inverted. Yes, the creator of the model says it's, it's flashing a false signal. He's saying this is a false signal now. But I'm saying this to you now. Maybe it's not a false signal. Maybe it's actually real too. Maybe it's gonna be nine out of nine. Maybe this is gonna be the nine out of nine times. But at the end of the day, you know what you gotta do, man, you know. We stick to the fundamentals and we just stay long and strong. That's it. We know crypto is under 1 trillion market cap still, which is a crime. And look, I believe every bone in my body, every single bone, that's right. I think crypto is going to 10 trillion. I think the whole market's going to do 10x, which means if you pick the right coins and communities who form a religion, you're going to get more than 10x. You might do 100x. That's what I think. You'll be able to get anywhere from 20x to 100x. That's amazing. You're going. You're doing. You're doing a, a plus 200% to plus 1,000% on the market itself. That's enormous. Enormous. If you get that right. If you get that wrong, like if you're buying Litecoin and any other trash that no one cares about, yeah, maybe instead of a 10x, you're gonna get like a 4x. 
Okay, but that's why I'm here every day, 18 hours a day. I put the pieces of the puzzle for you together. So, this interview, learn a lot. We learn a lot from Mr. Harvey. He made the model. He's even saying, yeah, man, like, you know, they're just two numbers. Like, it's, that's why it's always different, friends. Every single time it's different. I can't tell you how hard it is to sit there and just say, yeah, 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 I'm going to get it right every time. You're not. You're not. All we can do is try to measure emotions, but really at the end of the day, you still got to be prepared for the minus 90% plus in crypto. Plus, that's right. You have to be prepared for it. Because if you're not prepared for that, you are just assuming you're going to get out every single time. And what I've, cho- what I've shown you, right, you know, people here, these nerds who are like, you know, getting paid, they get fired and then employed again, they join the economy. They can't handle the reality of markets, which is what I'm in now. And the reality of markets is they are so paper thin to move assets, you'll lose your mind if you knew how thin they were. Not everyone can exit at the same time. Stocks, Property houses, commodities, crypto, doesn't matter what it is. Only like 3 to 5% of people can actually exit at, at once. There's not enough bids to let everyone out. And there's not enough offers to let everyone in, right? That's the bull market. But on the bids, on the way down, there's not enough. There's nothing. It's so thin, man. If people really want to hammer it down, they do. That's why, don't it? When, you, when, I, when I see someone saying, oh, you should have taken profits. Oh, why don't you take profits and just sell the top? You know that person. Unfortunately, they're poor and they're probably employed and they're never going to make it because they haven't done their research. Go check the liquidity. You can't sell anything. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you're a big whale, you can't you can't get out. The good thing is, you know all those big whales? They understand the game. That's why they don't go around when they see this stuff. They don't go around liquidating everything to zero. That's why when Bitcoin was down at 15K at FTX, these big whales were not saying, oh, gee, I better get out before it goes to zero. They weren't doing that, man. The truth is, they would rather it go to zero compared to the chance of missing out because they gave away their diamonds for pennies. They're not going to give away their diamonds for pennies. It doesn't matter what it is. You see this in other coins too. Have you heard of a little coin Ethereum? Right? No one wants to give away their diamonds for pennies. Happens in Doge too. Happens in Hex as well. Right? Yes, we saw some absolute Muppets, the four poopy horsemen, selling Hex at 1.7, 1.8 cents. Yeah, they have toilet paper hands and they're going to get a toilet paper emoji. And, right, they're going to also get a poopy emoji. And, you know what? I think there's a trash can emoji here. Let's see if I type... Oh, there is! That's right, that's exactly what they are. They are a toilet paper emoji, a poopy emoji, and a recycling trash bin. Just go one one way. A one-way ticket to the bin. That's what they did. They self-sabotage themselves. Don't think just because someone's big that they're smart. They're not. Maybe they're just lucky. We see it time and time again. So why I like this and we are blessed, why I like this and why I think we're blessed is, look, I'm going to be honest. I'm just being real with you. Maybe God threw us a bone here. He said, you know what? You guys got really screwed in 2021, right? Maybe God's saying that to us. I'm telling you, friends. Like, I I think about this. I'm thinking, hmm, maybe this stupid, pathetic Bitcoin thing that they call a parabola, which was nowhere near a freaking parabola. Like, oh, come look, just compare the size of this to that. Compare the two circles. Right, I'll just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I wanna show you, look at this. Compare that to this, okay? Just compare this distance, friends. Compare 1700% to 200 percent okay we got we got gypped we got gypped we got scammed doesn't matter how you say it maybe maybe god i'm gonna put the cloud up here a sunny cloud emoji right and i'm gonna put a bone he's literally throwing us a bone because that's all we are little dogs and let's put a little meat with a bone as well maybe that's what he did he said you know what i think you guys you guys got pretty destroyed in 2021 i'm gonna throw you this bone here here is a false signal, <laughs> a false signal yield curve. Here are these data points, which may or may not, you know, help in your favor. Hopefully, it does. Right? That, that's how I interpret it. Do you remember I say the market? We don't, it doesn't behave like relationship equity. So if you get times that are really, really, really good, you do come. The Grim Reaper does come for you, and you do get times that are bad. 
And if you get times that are really, really bad and painful, like we got a terrible cycle in 2021, I think we're going to get let off the hook. That's what I feel is going to happen. So you got to think about this yourself, how you interpret it. Remember, I, I've got a gift. I can interpret these as language of the market. I can see things forming. And that's probably adding to my conviction that we should just stay long and strong and be thankful for this. But I don't know if next time we're going to get so lucky. Until next time, friends.